Welcome back to CVM Live. It's now time for the major stories in detail. Orit Fisher has resigned as Director of Elections effective today. His resignation comes before a decision was made in the court matter between him and the Electoral Commission of Jamaica. In October of last year, Mr. Fisher filed an injunction against the Electoral Commission of Jamaica, barring them from removing from the post, him from the post, as he said his one-year appointment as election boss was unconstitutional. The judge was unable to immediately make a ruling after the February 26 hearing, but he upheld the injunction. When CVM Live reached out to Mr. Fisher's attorney, Hugh Wildman, he indicated that he was unaware of the resignation. CVM Live also reached out to nominated commissioner Tom Tavares Finson, who said he was not able to comment on the matter as it is still before the courts. Orrit Fisher first joined the organization more than 20 years ago. During Tuesday's sitting of parliament, the opposition spokesman on finance and planning, Mark Golding, launched a broadside against the JLP's handling of the economy, paying particular attention to the proposed increases for public sector workers. With that report, we join Joel Croskill. Your no new taxes is three budgets late, and your government is fully responsible for the delay. It was a vociferous opening salvo as Mark Golding produced his first address to Parliament as Shadow Minister of Finance and Planning. He surmised that the Audley Shaw-led stewardship of the Jamaican economy since the JLP took over has left much to be desired. Over 100,000 NIS pensioners are worse off. Over 400,000 self-employed persons are worse off, including farmers, hairdressers and barbers, taxis, minibus operators, shopkeepers, bar owners, mechanics, they're all worse off. Mr. Golding suggested that the tax policies of the JLP administration has seen the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. He pointed to the $1.5 million campaign promise as the root of the problem. Here is a GLP political advertisement from the last general election, which mashes down that lie. It said, we can afford it, it said. And then it goes on to say, the increase in the income tax threshold to 1.5 million could be done without any new taxes. See here, highlighted in gold print. Mr. Speaker, had the Jamaican people not been hoodwinked by that deception had they realized that the JLP had not thought this 1.5 plan through and that it would in fact cost ordinary Jamaicans an additional 30 billion in new taxes on consumers that tax plan would never have seen the light of day switching his tactics towards more recent events he suggested the wage increase negotiations currently being undertaken by government with particular workers is insulting on many levels. The side man on the solid waste garbage truck earning $6,200 a week is being offered an increase of 5%. $310 a week. $310 a week. That's worse than insult. The JUTC driver earning $12,000 a week is being offered an increase of $600 a week. The, the lady who is an ancillary worker in a hospital or in a school earning $8,500 a week is being offered an increase of $425 a week. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, where is the Shaw of 2015? Yeah. I can't see him. I can't see him. Joel Crosskill, CVM Live. With the CCTV surveillance cameras already installed in public spaces in Kingston, St. James, St. Anne, Clarendon and Manchester, the Ministry of National Security is now embarking on a collective approach to public safety and crime fighting. As Colin Brown tells us, in addition to stakeholders and business persons, the public now has an opportunity to become part of a new Jamaica Eye network. Many times, our security forces have been given basket to carry water, and that basket, I believe, is about 55 years old. By his own admission, the security minister also revealed that even with an almost tripling of his portfolio ministry budget, the cost to expand technologically by implementing a national CCTV surveillance program would be a massive strain. The cost of a system comprising 3,000 cameras, the required number to cover Kingston alone, would rake up a cost of 45 million U.S. dollars. That survey was enough for him and his team to resort to the true Jamaican style, Tonwihan. The outcome? 
the best workable private-public partnership for the Jamaica Eye to come into full view, he says. We looked at the six towns that have cameras and decided to network them and then to create enough space to say to members of the public, patriotic Jamaicans, we will create space on the platform so your camera feed can be brought in. With the eyewitnesses becoming more scarce and less reliable, Jamaica Eye will be an important weapon zooming in on the multifaceted violent crimes crippling our communities. It will also enhance disaster response and public safety. These watchful eyes are expected to make criminal acts more difficult with a bird's eye view of vandalism and general disrespect for law and order. Minister Montague says $181 million has been spent so far on the Jamaica Eye Network system from his budget, and it's anticipated that the more persons participate, the better will be the impact for everyone. Every activity in the control center will be recorded, and therefore it can be audited. There is a rigorous audit regime because we want to protect the integrity of the Jamaica Eye. At the five monitoring centers, they can observe but they cannot get in to the system. Curlin Brown, CVM Live. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Georgia War Richards, revealed a number of sticking points in negotiations with the Ministry of Finance for improved wages, as Joel Croskill reports. Speaking on CVM at sunrise, President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Mrs. Georgia War Richards, confirmed that the teachers who have been missing from classrooms since the start of the week are not absent as a result of strike action. I, I have no knowledge of a strike action. What I know is that teachers are ill. As the nation experiences the alleged final day of the sick out by teachers, some clarity was provided on two sticking points in the contract negotiations with government. We are willing to find that midpoint. And that is why we are asking that something that will affect all teachers, something that will see a little improvement in the lives of all teachers across the system, that the book and the software allowance be touched. Book and software is an allowance that is unique to the teaching profession, will not affect any other sector. In addition to an improved book and software allowance, the JTA president indicated that the contract period and the provisions for pension that is being offered is also unacceptable. What it is that we're used to is a two-year contract period. In light of the unpredictability of inflation, we would do it, we'll be doing ourselves an injustice should we lock ourselves into a four-year contract period. We have to take many things into consideration. Over the four years, teachers are expected to be contributing 4% over the four years towards yeah. pension. Joel Crossgill, CVM Live. Gender Minister, the Honorable Olivia Barbizzi Grange, says women's political empowerment and equal access to leadership positions are fundamental to achieving sustainable development. CVM Live's Khadija Thomas has this report. The Gender Minister was speaking at the Young Women's Leadership Conference on Mary Seacole Hall at the University of the West Indies Mono Campus recently. She adds that slow growth in women's representation will ultimately compromise equality, but outlined women have long been occupying roles that were primarily held by men. We have already had a female Prime Minister, a female Attorney General, a female Minister of Justice, a female Speaker of the House, female heads of political parties, female President of the Senate, female party chairpersons, and just to understand that we have also had two male ministers of women's affairs. The minister says being involved in politics allowed her to make an impact in an ever-changing political climate. Being a victim of political violence and witnessing racial prejudice, Grange says these experiences prepared her for the role she would later administer in politics. I grew up in a very dynamic, very, very dynamic environment, and I was exposed to the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
But at no time I ever felt fearful. At no time I ever was disrespected. At no time I, even with the political polarization and my house would get stoned at the end of a political meeting, I was never fearful because my grandmother taught me never, ever to fear anything. Khadija Thomas, CVM Live. Members of the Public Administration and Appropriations Committee deliberated on the issue of the ongoing negotiations between public sector workers and the government, focusing on whether or not workers will be able to pursue further bargaining in spite of the pending March increase in members' salaries. CVM Live's Joel Crosskill reports. The meeting of the Public Administration and Appropriations Committee saw the issue of the ongoing negotiations between public sector workers and the government ventilated as it relates to the impending March payment of additional funds. Though persons may not have signed on to accepting the payments, we are forced to pay you. It does not mean you are not at liberty to continue to negotiate, but we are forced to pay out as much as possible under that 9% of GDP as at March 31st, 2018, and then we take it from then. Mrs. Holness's concerns were addressed by the Acting Financial Secretary from the Ministry of Finance and Public Service, Mrs. Darlene Morrison, who confirmed that the government's target of 9% of GDP for salaries of public sector workers was an influence on the negotiations. In making the target for next year, if we do not pay this year the 17, 18 amounts, it means we would need to push those retroactive payments beyond next year. Otherwise, we would not meet the target. Mrs. Holness suggests that much of the backlash from public sector workers is as a result of miscommunication regarding the March payment. As a committee, I also believe that we should make the point, um, as the FS is indicating, of the critical nature of meeting that 9% because I got that a lot of the venom of persons was not understanding why they actually needed to be paid before the end of March this year. They genuinely yeah. didn't understand it. And so they, they took it as a, an insult to be forcing this payment down my throat. So as a committee, I would recommend that in addition to saying that your liberty is not being removed, we should remind of why it is that the payment is being made in this way. Joel Crosskill. CVM Live. Time now for regional and international news with our reporter Nikoi Wilson. It was like a scene from a movie as thousands of dollars worth of jewelry were stolen in a daring daylight robbery on High Street San Fernando in Trinidad on Tuesday. As seen from CCTV footage, three men one with a firearm entered the jewelry store and accosted the security guard sometime before 11 a.m. The guard was pushed to the ground by one of the men who held a firearm over him. Four female employees and several customers were in the store at the time. One of the bandits used a hammer and smashed showcases containing gold and diamond jewelry, which he and an accomplice stuffed in backpacks. According to reports, the criminals then walked out of the store and escaped through a nearby car park. In Grenada, the ruling New National Party, NMP, was returned to office on Tuesday, winning all 15 seats in the general election. It's the second consecutive landslide victory for the party. In a radio interview, leader of the party, Dr. Keith Mitchell, called on the leadership of the main opposition National Democratic the Congress, NDC, to be a part of the social partners that will chart the way forward for the country. He again dismissed the notion that the clean sweep would result in the government having a free hand in the running of the country's affairs. Welcome back to CVM Live, our 90-minute news program. The ongoing budget debate has engendered much public interest and speculations. Only yesterday, opposition spokesman on finance, Mark Golding, launched a stinging attack on the government, ripping into their tax package, which he has dismissed as only benefiting the rich. All of this on the back of the finance minister's presentation, pointing to a flourishing Jamaican economy. 
This evening, we put the issues straight on the table. Joining us in our panel discussion, we have Sierra Neer, IMF fellow, economist Dr. Andre Houghton, and university lecturer Errol Gregory. Gentlemen, it is our pleasure. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, I keep oh, watching you both. So <laughs> we appreciate that here. sincerely. Thank you. It is an exciting time in the history of Jamaica's economy. For the first time in a very long time, no new taxes. First time in a long time, no new taxes. But opposition spokesperson Mark Golding singing attack on the government, saying that the imposition or the lack of an imposition of taxes is actually three budgets late. Yeah. Andre Houghton, you're an IMF fellow. Speak to us. Yeah, the, 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 the understanding is that Jamaica is operating under fiscal rule, and the fiscal rule is supposed to instill what we call fiscal discipline. Now, based on what Mark is saying, Mark is saying that because of the 1.5 package that was handed out uh, in two consecutive years prior to now, the government had to uh, add additional taxes over those two years as well. But we have to understand that the, 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 the process of not increasing taxes is a very new thing to Jamaica. To understand that we are on the right side of what we call the Lafa curve where our tax rates are, are too high. So what we've seen is that by increasing the threshold, which is a sort of giving, re reducing taxes for, 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 for civil servants and so on, the government has collected five billion more in taxes. So this is important because what we want to see and understand is how do people respond to changes in, 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 in different tax avenues and so on and so forth. So it's welcomed and what, what we're seeing now is that even though it is late, it could have been a year when the government say, okay, we need to pay the teachers, so we're adding new taxes again. And, you know, in, in some sort of shifting up the numbers that don't make any, any sort of sense. So what we're seeing now is a concerted effort to really maintain the fiscal rule, at the same time not collect too much or drain the economy of its resources that it's we It's interesting, need you mentioned the, the Laffer curve, that sounds like Arthur Laffer of Reaganomics. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> important because as, 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 as economists and as, as, as politicians, we have to understand that business is very different from economics. And it's not about increasing taxes every year because you want to collect more. It's about understanding how people respond to incentives. And if people are given incentives that means that they will be able to understand their position more and they will be able to contribute to the government coffers Mr. more. Mr. Gregory, mm -hmm. Mr. Golding posited yes. yesterday that economic growth is not as bossy as we think it is. In fact, he says that the government has been turning back the progress. Yeah, and I don't understand that because I thought at one level the government or, or the public was saying that this administration, contrary to what we did in the past, is continuing with the kind of IMF strictures that Andre referred to. And I thought that that would be seen as positive. But what I heard the opposition spokesman say, um, it, it sounded like you know he was saying all they were doing is continuing what we did, suggesting that that was a negative. And I couldn't understand that because I thought we were all saying that the country is at a point now where rather than change policies and change the name, there's more continuity. But so he, that kind of bothered me. said that we have fallen in the doing business category, the yeah, World yeah. Bank's that, ratings. Is that true? <laughs> Andre, I thought, I thought that we... There's some, some listen, most. it's Are always there, okay. very easy to start a business in Jamaica. But mm -hmm. as you know, it's very difficult to continue a business because of bureaucracy okay. and antagonism okay. and, and, and a lot of innate handicaps in, in, in the day-to-day -day operation, you know. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of nuances that need remedies. And gradually over time, then I know that we, we will get it right. The world is looking at us at every step of the way. The world is looking at us. And how we respond to a, a particular position and how we move, move our, our economy forward is going to require more than just forecasting a five and four. It is going to require a lot of work. Every year we speak about it. And come on. We all knew that the economy was not going to grow by the projected 2.4% this year. The economy just grew by 9%. Last year is the same thing. 0.9%. Yeah, 0.9%. Point, yeah, point mm -hmm. And the last time we grew by 9% was 1969, when the world needed bauxite and Jamaica had some of the best alumina. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we have to understand that 
it's a demand and supply thing. You know, we have to supply what the world demands. We have to supply what the world demands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But well, go ahead. Go on. Go on, actually. No. Yeah. So uh, over on the time, note of mm -hmm. inflation. Yes. It is said that inflation is trending up. Yeah, and up. food, they say, has gone up to. 16 by 6.7 percent yeah. veg and starch up mm -hmm. by 16.9 right. yeah. percent and electricity 13.3 percent 2017 yes. mm -hmm. how are we growing when all these things are going but wouldn't some of that food increase in the food prices be contingent on the kind of weather that we had experienced that we we are coming out yeah, of there, no that should see some rebound well electricity and but even then we're told of initiatives that were being that are being pursued now to move away from um, the regular petroleum to LNG. LNG. So I was, I, I know that will take time actually. I mean, clearly that won't happen by one fell swoop. But, but, but I thought initiatives are being pursued that would help to stabilize, at least even stabilize energy prices more than see it impacting consumers I was negatively. in Montego Bay over the weekend and I was at the market because my stepmother have a store in the market. She sell clothes and the police were there locking up the people for dis displaying their clothes. And they were also locking up the people in the market by displaying their fruits and vegetables. Now, at the end of the day, my stepmother called me and said, Dre, you know, say you need to check this out. And we'll come and we'll look. And the amount of fruits and vegetables at the end of Saturday night. And she said to me, you know, a lot of these people borrow money to buy the fruits, to come here to the market from St. Elizabeth and Manchester. So the obstacles themselves. to doing business here at every level. There are level. too many problems, and yeah. we are not trying to facilitate but each other and to make sure that what, what is... You see, the, the post-harvesting, how we store these fruits, mm -hmm. very important, very, very important. But, but, but you touch on a point. That is, in a way, what Mark Golding also raised in his budget presentation, where he spoke yeah. about a lot of the details mm -hmm. that go into reducing the bureaucracy, yeah. um, a lot of the nuance, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And that, those are the things that really help in terms of economic growth, not mm -hmm. necessarily all the macro, uh, getting all the macroeconomic variables pointing mm -hmm. in the right yeah. direction. The, mm -hmm. the, the economy is multifaceted. And when you look at the budget, the, 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 the minister says it's stability, growth, and prosperity. Now, in economics, we go stability, growth, and development. Now, prosperity without development means that it's just leaning to one. It's like you're looking at the consumption, like you say, you know, someone want a whole of chicken without you cooking the chicken. Mm -hmm. So the, we have to understand that we have to mobilize a path for economic development that is going to encapsulate everyone not just a few and mm -hmm. also we have to look at the different avenues look we blame the lack of GDP growth on the agricultural sector every year we blame we blame it on heavy rainfall or we blame it on flood so there is no happy medium and this has been going on since I've been back in 2011 that's what seven years of analyzing the budget and seeing the same thing going on and on and on where we are not but before you go on, and, 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 and yeah. Ashley has some other questions that she wanted mm -hmm. to ask you, but mm -hmm. are we seeing a sea change now? We're in the past, you said from 2011, but mm -hmm. as far back as I can remember. Yeah, man, we are seeing, it's gradually moving in. Let me just make this point quickly, um, <laughs> Andre. In that, are we seeing now, are we at the point of, that there might be a sea change, and it, the sea, part of the sea change is that there has been reasonable positive um, policy continuity over two administrations. Yeah, man, excellent. Largely yes. driven by the average. Excellent. Yeah. But also it reflects in the, the presentations themselves, mm -hmm. where the, the minister says no new taxes, which is really mm -hmm. a boring presentation in the context of yeah, presentations. Yeah. 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 I yeah. enjoyed it. By <laughs> <laughs> and also yeah. from Mark Golding's presentation, mm -hmm. where he has to focus on the politics of the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our budget presentations have really been focused on the politics of the moment. Mm -hmm. yes. But now, going forward, they are really focused on the nuts and bolts of how budgets yeah. and there economies are. are. Is that, is that a fear? Yeah, that's yeah. a fear. Yeah. Statement, very fair statement. There are allocations for water and irrigation and so on and so forth. Last year, I went to St. Thomas to look at the agro park because the farmers called me because the, the potatoes that they were planting, the flood waterlogged the land and they lost everything. So they were looking at how to convert the land to, to, pro, to pro, pro produce a more viable product that can withstand the rain, etc., 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 and I was there discussing with them. I'm saying that to say that we've made a lot of attempts. Mm 
-hmm. We have made so many attempts. There are people in the desert who don't have any water who are harvesting water and dis redistributing it in a very efficient manner so as to enable their economies to move forward. And that is what we want to see. We want to see a distribution of resources in such a way that it channels in the avenues that are going to help to increase production and productivity. And if we put so much emphasis on agriculture, we have to put so much emphasis on not just providing proper irrigation and proper, proper water facilities for the, for the agriculture product, but also post-harvesting, storage, packaging, and distribution. But I'm sorry, Jump had a big conference in Andre, which attempted, actually, which attempted to address some of the very things that Andre just mentioned and, talk, and spoke about uh, investment possibilities in agriculture and how we change the perception of agriculture as just being back-breaking work that greater persons do <laughs> as a uh, way of teasing it. Um, so some changes are happening, Andre, mm -hmm. um, but we know it's not as fast. But Errol, but are you sure. seeing a development plan as alluded to by Andre? Andre said that's what he wants to see. He's the IMF fellow. Mm -hmm. Are we budgeting to really promote the development of this country in an efficient manner. You, one could say, actually, that to the extent to which government is maintaining the fiscal targets and mm. some of the work that Dr. Phillips had started, in that sense, one would say yes. You know, mm. certainly not fast enough, not inclusive enough, Andre's point. Uh, and, and, we, and Mr. Chen spoke earlier, I hate to call him Mr. Chen, of Richard, the lack of trust. <laughs> Richard, sorry. <laughs> I said we interrupt, sorry. The lack yeah, of fine. trust. Um, how, we, how we address those issues as we try to move forward. On the actually. lack of trust, Andre, mm. consumer confidence, Mr. Golding says it's known. Is that so? Boy, you have to ask why King <laughs> name, but they pull uh, them. I he would have to tell you that and the scene. Because he wasn't doing was 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 so much. <laughs> He would have to give advice on the consumer sure. confidence. Look, yeah. you see all these confidence, this, that, that it's, it's meaningless without the spending power. It's meaningless without the avenues really to explore those con at that level of confidence. Look. We are seeing improvements in how we deal with our fiscal, fiscal uh, in-house issues, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we are seeing improvements in how we approach our understanding of the way we approach taxation in the country. And we are seeing improvements in how the government strategizes to collect more revenue, and that is important because it reduces the fiddling with the rates, which we don't want to see. And we, 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 but importantly, we are seeing a budget that, that is, is medium term, Mm -hmm. And it's the first time yeah, that we're seeing yeah. a budget that mm -hmm. is, that, that's medium term, planning for four years ahead. So the budget has line items up to 2022. And that is very critical because what that allows you to do, mm -hmm. it allows you to prioritize some items this year, prioritize some for next year, some for the other, in a synchronized manner to achieve your objectives. Bring back to Montego Bay, the inner city, the roads, Rosites, Farmites, Glendivan, Norwood, CLM, Catching, Granville, everywhere. The road them dilapidated, but what are we doing? We are building a, a bypass road for bypass the city while the inner city is still neglected. So it's like, no fighting them, young man. You see, we have to empower our people. But Andre, you raise a good point because two of the major things that uh, Mark Golden raised in his presentation was, of course, economic growth mm -hmm. and crime. Yes, and the fact of the matter is that both administrations, or administrations going back to independence, mm -hmm. have a terrible record. All administrations have a terrible record in terms of economic growth and yes. crime. Yes. And do, can we as a country get by on just these small increments, 0.9% this year, etc., or, or, or reducing <laughs> all the small zosos here and a state of emergency, or do we need but either administration, whether PNP or administration, jail, do we need to make a, a huge change, change in the way we look at these issues and make a, a significant yeah, zo the zo zo has been effective in terms of curtailing crime, but in terms of empowering young people, it has not. Uh, we need better social intervention programs in terms of how do we provide resources to increase the earning potential. I mean, we're not going to grow tomatoes. Tomatoes cost $100 a pound. We can grow cannabis if we grow it properly. It can cost up to 100000 200000 per pound. Now, the slavery type economy that we live in always perpetuates in the government mind that whatever jobs they are creating, they just need to create jobs because people need work. But at the same time, when you look at the 
Eastern countries, you look at Singapore, you look at the Philippines, you look at Mauritius, when their government approach economic development and public spending, they try not to look at the quantity of jobs, they try to look at the quality of jobs. You understand what I'm saying? So it is always important to make sure that whatever jobs we try to produce or provide for people can afford them a standard of living so that their brains are focused on that task because if you're not earning your brain all over the place mr gregory mm -hmm. mr golding also said that we need a zozo on poverty in this country i don't think anybody would disagree with that but how you how you finance it and you know how you implement it against the background of all the other, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. other issues that you have to face it, that's that's i think actually is where the issue the problem comes how you prioritize which i, I hear andre saying um by having a four-year forecast with the budget presumably that will help us to be better able to prioritize and do those things that Mr. gentlemen Golding, Final question to both of you very quickly. Mm -hmm. Richard mentioned the politics of the moment just a while ago. So in the politics of the moment, Mr. Golding said that the JLP average growth was 0.6% from 2005 to 2018, and the PMP's average growth was 1%. Negative 0.6% for the JLP, 1% for the PMP. Who is the growth master? Uh, I have to leave that to Andre. Andre. Look. Let me explain something to you, Ashley. You see, this is a blame game, mm -hmm. and this... Yeah. Ooh, listen, the country need positive, forward-looking yeah. leaders. Mm -hmm. You get what I say? The country don't need people to gossip when I say them, 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 them. We need people to stand up firm and say we need X, Y, Z, and X, Y, Z is what we are going to do. You understand what I say? This okay, politics thing is joke. I'm an economist. I'm a key and really come upon politics, of politics. Rather than shifting Thank you so gears, much, yeah? gentlemen. All right. Quite an informative panel. Thank Happy so to much. have you. So, Thank you so much. on the budget, the budget debate is going to continue. Of course, we're going to keep you updated on CBM Live. But we're going to take it over to Lifestyle and Entertainment. Black Panther opened on Friday, February 14th in Jamaica. And it has been sold out every night since then, reaching the one-month mark tonight.